I got See, don't tell me you can't get any pop out of a high guard. Okay, don't tell me that, all right? Because you can't. I'm an old man. I'm wearing hiking boots because my shoes are muddy, and I'm still getting some pop. All right, this is Conrad with Grumpy Old Geezer Boxing, and today we're going to continue talking about stances, right? And I'm going to go just through a couple very quickly. Well, one very quickly, and then we're going to focus on my favorite stance. So I'm going to put some gloves on just so you see it. The first one we're going to talk about just very, very quickly is the peekaboo stance, okay? Now, the peekaboo stance is made fam famous by Mike Tyson, taught him by Customato. And what you see is you'll see the hands turned in. The stance will be more squared up, so you can't see my feet, but my feet are much more squared up than usual, right? So with my, my, maybe not my feet even with each other, but not so, so, not so much in the normal stance with one foot forward and the other one back, like what we talk about. And you'll see the gloves like that, okay? It's usually a very... You know, it's for a guy that wants to get inside, so he's coming forward, bobbing and weaving. Uh, Mike Tyson used to actually jiggle his head to throw people off and bob and weave. And then he would, was, I don't know how he did it, to tell you the truth, but he would, he would come in bobbing and weaving, and then, bam, the Tyson pie pie punches. Okay, now, that stance is extremely, extremely demanding physically. you got to be in great shape. If you practice it with somebody, it will wear you out. There's a few things you have to actually also get used to. One, because you're so squared up that you may have a reach disadvantage. It will be slower for you to get the jabs off. I don't think you can get jabs and straight punches that well. It is great because once you get inside, I mean, you're in such a good position to hit with uppercuts, to hit with hooks. You know, Tyson even used to switch feet to hit and all that. It's very difficult, though, to learn. And if you're going to make it work, you need to kind of have, if you ask me, a body type like Tyson, tree trunk legs. You got to be able to, you, you look up Tyson, how he could jump rope, what kind of shape he was in to do that. For beginners, you know, there's always the, the normal standard, you know, stance. And, uh, and for older guys, you have the standard boxing stance. This is not necessarily something that I would recommend, especially if you're getting a little bit older or unless you just have tons of time to prepare yourself physically for how demanding it is. Now, there's another thing to it. Tyson, he would have his gloves glued to his cheek, you know, come forward, and, he, you know, he was strong as an ox, and people were also scared of him, to tell you the truth. But when you have your gloves like this, okay, turned like this, Unless you are just a brute, it's easy to split those gloves. Well, maybe not easy, but it definitely can be done. Now, get your friend, get a friend of yours, hold your gloves like that, and get him to just press on the inside edge of the glove forward. And you will see it's hard, it's hard not to, not to, to keep your wrist straight. He will push through like that. Now... That's another reason why I don't really recommend it. I, I know that there are some guys who like it like this. I also think it slows you down to get your jab off, right? That it's better if you, ha if you don't have your hand turned all the way like that, although there are definitely guys who think that they, it makes them twist and get, it, get some speed and power. But the, but the stance that I like, that I really like, and as I got older, I liked it more and more. When I was a kid, I got to admit, I didn't really like it. Uh, my coach would yell at me all the time to do it. But it's the high guard stance, like Winky Wright, okay? Some guys will say, oh, that's boring. Oh, man, you can't get any punch power off and all that. We'll talk about all that. We'll talk about that. But just right now, we're in a close-up. There's a key to it. You do not do the high guard stance like the peekaboo. This is the peekaboo. You don't do the high guard stance like this because you can't see. And also, people will split your guard, you know? The peekaboo is a low, come in, very aggressive, get under, come in stance. The, the, you're not going to stand straight up. We're going to talk about it. Don't stand straight up. But I'm talking the high guard binoculars. Look what I'm doing. I'm looking through, not like that. I'm looking through my gloves. You see it? So when I turn to slip, I'm still looking through the edge of my gloves. This stance does not mean you cannot move and you're just taking punches. That's not what it's about. 
but it is a very good stance when you put your gloves like that and you get your friend now to do the same test and he can even jab on you and when he hits the front of these gloves right there when they're like that against the edge front edge of your head you'll be surprised how much you can take and how little impact you you feel okay do it like that you'll get your blood gloves split a lot of times Man, people split those gloves, especially if you don't have them close to your head. They start bobbing out here. They'll split them. You'll hit yourself and all that. You get into a high guard, and you'll be surprised how strong they are. Yeah, you have to watch it for hooks, but you'll have a lot more visibility with these binoculars, too. And there's a lot you can do with it. Just because in your high guard does not mean you cannot move. You can move. You just got to practice keeping your hands glued to your high guard. Okay? Now... I love that stance, but let's, one, other, one other bit that I would say that's an advantage to the high guard. If you're in a normal guard and you're new or you're getting older and you're not reacting, getting out of the way of punches as well as you used to, um, the high guard gives another advantage. Look what happens. You don't have to make as many decisions. Okay? If I'm in a high guard and the punches are coming in, yeah, I got to watch out for hooks. I got to move. And sure, my, they can go to my body. I've got to get... I might have to get my elbows down. I might have to drop out of the high guard one side to the other, right? But that's, I don't have as many decisions to make. When I'm in this stance, a normal boxing stance, I've got great visibility, it's true, it's true. But as you get older, you lose your action time. And if you're new, you don't even understand what's coming anyway. So hooks are coming and people start, their arms start going all over the place. They don't have a reference point and they have too many decisions to make and they're trying to parry stuff with their hands they're getting out of the way. When you're starting out, a high guard is a good, a good option. When you're getting older, it's a good option because it keeps you disciplined and also it reduces the number of decisions you have to make and you can you get a lot of those punches on the arms. Now there is a disadvantage in that if you're, if you're fighting in an amateur fight or you're doing, let's say, a fight night and you've got judges that are going to judge on amateur and they're hearing a lot of that impact off your arms, they may just start scoring the other side. Okay. Okay, that's why you got to be aggressive. You got to throw punches. You got to throw combinations, which you definitely can do out of a high guard. If you don't believe that, look at Canelo, right? Canelo Alvarez. Look at uh, Virgil Ortiz. He's a prospect coming up. It's just been, you know, I really like him. I, some people think maybe that they're giving him too much credit too early, and we want to see him fight some real competition. But I'm going to put some links down there. But starting with Winky Wright, who for me, uh, Marlon Starling too, but Winky Wright for me was king of the high guard. And I, I'm going to put some clips in, and I'll put some clips of Canelo fighting out of the high guard. And you'll see, bam, 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 he will throw, he'll throw uh, combinations and then throw his Mexican hooks, slip, spin out, get out of it, go back into it. Um, I'll put a link to the Kovalev fight on that. But now let's go a little further, and then we'll go out to the White Trash Gazebo and... Uh, and we'll, we'll do some work on the heavy bag, and I'll show you some things to do there, too. Okay, now let's talk about what you're going to do in the high guard. Because there's a lot of people that said you can't get any pop out of it, right? They feel better, you know, when it's just out of a regular guard. Shooting a jab, shooting a straight, right? And I understand that, because out of a normal guard, it does feel natural to turn your hips. But, here's the problem. The high guard's great. You can still... Like I said, you can still you, your toe, your hip, and then you punch out of the high guard. But the problem is, where a lot of people make a mistake, is they start standing up. When they stand up, they lift their head up. If you lift your head up and you try to punch out of a high guard, you aren't going to get any pop. Okay? So, if I'm like this, right? I just can't, I mean, I can kind of do it just because I'm me. But it, it, I can tell that I don't really have it. I don't really have it. And especially if I start trying to throw straights with my head up, one, it doesn't feel right. But it's not the way to do it. Now, what you do, you got to make sure your chin's down and you're firing from the top of your head. And it's going to feel weird at first, but you just look what happens. I'm, I'm here. I'm looking through like binoculars right here. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like what we talked about. So your toe, your hip, your hip, your shoulder last. But it's just coming off the top of my head. See, it's still the same thing, but it's coming off the top. Of it. It's but it's but I'm firing from the top of my head, but it's everything else is the same. So here I am. I'm going to come over this angle a little bit, like here. So I'm looking through the binoculars, right? And here I am. You see that? Now 
that was definitely more powerful than having your head up. If you're in the high guard and you start raising your chin, one, you're going to get clocked. It's, and then you're going to, you, you even, you'll start getting hit and you'll start leaning back and then you're in trouble. But two, you will lose your power. But the cool thing about the high guard, and you'll see Canella doing this, is he's here. And look, I've got my power off my jab. I can even do a step through jab. So I'll, get, I'll back up. I'm way back here. See how far I'm away from the back? I'm in the high guard though. See? Just that step. And I can, I'm really, when it's coming with your chins down and it's coming off the top, you can really stretch and put some power into it, right? But you also can throw really good combos that will catch guys off guard because a lot of guys don't expect you to throw a combo from the high guard. So if you practice a one, two, three from the high guard, right? So you're here, bam, bam. And try to get your hands to come back to the high guard, which is not that easy. And see if, you know, you're gonna have to do what I say, not what I do, but it'd be like, be like this again, man. I set these cameras up and I get cold. I'm not that warmed up, but okay. So, see that, see that, right? Right, you see how I'm getting, I'm getting the power on that, on that left hook because it's coming back to the high guard. So, this is what you do. Come on, dogs. I'm in the white trash gazebo, obviously, and my super, my white trash beagles won't stop barking. But how do you get where you get used to it? This is what you do. You can do this. Hey! You can do this. You can do this on the double end of the bag. But in the beginning, it's going to help to do this on the heavy bag, okay? And it's just a simple drill. You're just going to go, you're going to go one, two, three, reset, one, two, reset, one. If you want, you can practice what we talked about early too, where it's just a one, one, hook, one, right? Very Mexican style way to start practicing. But if we just want to talk about jabs for right now, and that's where you'll feel weak in the beginning of the high guard, that's what you do. So do it slow. It would be like this. One, two, three, back. One, two, back. One. Okay? Now if I'm going to do it a little bit faster, and you, and you do it till your arm gets tired, right? Be back, right? Then, back. And then, so that last one, I got a good step on it. You saw that. You saw how that... Funny. Oh man, I felt it. <laughs> Don't tell me you can't get power off the high guard. Look what I did. I just popped my glove. I felt it go. Can you see that? These are not very good gloves, but okay. We'll do it again. I'm off the high guard. I'll try to concentrate and not look at the camera right now. So, same drill. So, get back, right? Then, get back. And then, step one. Now, if I'm a little bit warmed up, I'll do it faster. But you do that, and you do that for you time it for at least two minutes and you can take those little breaks between each one because you're working on form so that first one is it's three quick punches but you are pulling it back not all the way back but all the way but back in the direction of your head you can if you want practice this at first you know you touch it like what we talked about you reach out touch it pull back but that's the drill so then you're back right see then you're back right and then and you really try to stretch and get that power on that last punch, okay? Now, if you want, you can also do the one, two, hook, one, right? So, one, two, it's actually not one, two, one, one, hook, three, one. It's, just, it's the same thing, but it's off the high guard. So, your chin is down, right? Your chin is down. So, right? I'll do, it, I'll do it here so you can see a little better. So, whoops, back swung too much, sorry. <laughs> do it again. Trying to do this for the camera, but okay. So, see that? And you're getting used to this arm working, working, but coming back to a high guard. Okay, so remember, a way to get used to this, a way to get used to this, just those three drills, right? It's really two drills. So it's just three jabs, two jabs, one jab. So one, 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 then in reset, sorry, one, 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 one. Set, one, one, set, fit then a big Golovkin stretch it out jab, right? That's one, but off the top of your head. The other one would be the Mexican type drill we were talking about. So one, one, three, one, but get it back to the top of your head, especially after that last one, right? And the other is when you're throwing other combinations, other combinations, make sure 
they're coming from the top of your head. Now, chin down. If it's coming off the top of your head with your chin down, with your chin down, right, you'll get power. If your chin's up, your chin's up, well, one, it'll make it harder to see, but two, I see I didn't get any power off that. I tried, but I didn't get any power off that. Plus, you'll get in lots of trouble. If your chin's up in the high guard, that's terrible. You're really going to be in trouble, okay? So that's it. If you want, you can practice off the bumps and things, keeping your head down. So here's the bag. It's coming in. I'm spinning out hook. Or it's coming out, coming this way and hook. You can practice all kinds of things, but keep it. Keep that high guard glued to the top of your head, to the top of your head. Okay, that's enough for this time. Dog's barking again in the white trash gazebo. Like, subscribe, come back. I hope you like it. I like doing these things, but man, it doesn't make any sense if nobody's watching. So come back, see you soon, and give me like a zillion likes if you can. Send it to your friends. Bye-bye.